Okay, we're gonna launch our second satellite now. Uh, Curb and Spear of Influence Sat 2. Let's change that to, yeah, make sure that the name is actually Sat 2. Uh, now, I'm gonna do things a little bit differently. This is the same exact model, right? Same model, we're not gonna change anything about the satellite, but I'm gonna put some parachutes on these lower stages because stage recovery is a mod we have. We might as well use it. Um, it saves us money, it gets us money back for these lower stages. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put parachutes on these lower stages. Use real shoots. And I'm gonna put one there and one there. So that is going to hopefully save parachutes. Uh, now they don't need to be deployed, I don't think. But I'm gonna activate them in the same stage as this deployment. So I'm basically going to hit yeah, I'm gonna do that. Because then they'll deploy as soon as they start to lose altitude and that's kind of what I want, so. Okay, are we ready to go again? Satellite number two. I think we are. Um, I, could do, I could do a parachute on this stage too. By the way, the VAB is so buggy with 1.1.2, like the game is terrible. Like you may have noticed, you may notice the interface flickering a lot. That would be why, because it's buggy as hell. Okay, got that out of my system. This is a swivel. Let's put a couple of parachutes on this too, why not? I don't know if it will recover it fully. Whoa, I don't want that many. Let's just do two. Two should be fine. Okay, no torque, zero torque. Good, let's save and launch. Okay, back on the launch pad. SAS on, up we go. You know, I gotta say it, um, precise maneuver, as opposed to precise node, pretty cool. Um, I was wondering how I could like adjust it within the interface like that, and it's got a one button circularize, which is pretty cool too. And it doesn't actually, te it doesn't technically do it for you. Um, it just tells you what you would need to do, where you would need to burn, and how you would need to burn um, to circularize your orbit around a, a given point, around the point where your maneuver node is. And so that's all it's doing. And then the flight computer, and then I'm just like, okay, flight computer, do it. <laughs> so, which is not entirely unrealistic. I mean, granted, we would still have to have people sort of calculating things for a bit, but I mean, most of these automated stuff in real life space is, there's a whole lot of that going on, you know? Okay, so we're gonna thrust up and release. And yeah, those parachutes totally deployed. So that's weird. Um, I don't know how that works. Like precise node said, that's not, that, that's how it works, you know? Or not precise, no, real shoot. Ah, uh, uh, I can't talk. I can't talk, guys. Stage recovery. Stage recovery tells us, yeah, that's the mod right there. Um, tells me to put parachutes on these things and deploy them, but like, I don't think that's how it works. Maybe I'll move this up above it, and like, we'll see if this gets recovered even if I don't, like, if I don't deploy the shoot. If I just arm it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to leave it alone. See what happens. Okay. We're just going to keep going up. And we'll get to our burn here. Put a maneuver there and tell it to circularize. Cool. That's really quick. I like that a lot. Oh, I like that a lot. So I can circularize it around 80 if I want to there. I probably won't though. I'm probably just going to, um, actually I want, actually want the fairing to deploy first. So let's get the fairings uh, gone. There we go. And then I need the antenna. Good. 
and then the solar panels. Good. All right, let's burn. Boom! So we are burning. And we're gonna have to go up a little bit because I think we're not quite gonna get into orbit again. We're gonna have to go through the atmosphere. I don't wanna deal with that again, so I'm not going to. If I can help it anyway. Up goes our up goes, up goes, up goes. Let's let's let the apoapsis go up a little bit more. And we can stop right there. 790 we're gonna stop at. Okay. In case you weren't aware, I was also I was looking here at apoapsis height. I was also looking over here at apoapsis height. And actually, because we have TAC life support installed now, it doesn't it doesn't have a button for over here. It's still located at the old place over here, which is weird. And it's actually getting in the way of Kerbal Engineer. So I'm gonna go with uh, Kerbal Engineer. Let's do edit the HUD. Uh, no, wait, not that. Um, I want to. Uh, how do how do I do this? Um. Oh, okay, I just hit edit and then I move it. Okay, so let's move the HUD here. Uh, and then I want to move HUD number two over here. Cool. Now, for HUD number one, I would actually like to know the orbital period built right in would be nice. So let's do orbital speed and period. There we go. So here we are in space with our second satellite. And you'll notice that we have a connection to the KSC, but the KSC is not anywhere around here where it's a bunch of water. It's because we have the other satellite. So we have a connection because it has a connection. That's how remote tech works. That's how the satellite network works. So, what we're gonna do now is get ourselves a maneuver that pretty much brings us out there. So what I wanna do is, uh, I'm gonna burn here, I think. Burn a little bit prograde, get, get ourselves out to about 850. That will pretty much do it right there. Whoops, too far. Pretty good. Call it good. So I'm gonna burn that. Tell the flight computer to do that. It's gonna be in 40 seconds, 38 seconds. Okay, so it went ahead and did the burn. We still have a connection. So let's set up another maneuver node. So we're gonna set up a new maneuver node here. Now I want to bring, uh, this is around 850, it's our, at, at our apoapsis, which is at 850, and I wanna bring our orbit all the way out to 850 again. So, but the thing is, it's gonna be, I don't want it to be exactly 850, because I want this satellite to be in the proper position for this one. So I'm gonna need to wait for a period where it actually looks like it's gonna be working out that way. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to burn to about, well, I'm, I'm ahead of it now, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna to be too far ahead of it later, so I'm actually gonna burn a little bit too far. Let's burn about here, there, just a little too far. Okay, you guys, we've got some graphical problems happening here with the map again. Awesome, love that, don't you? I do. So here's what we're doing. Um, we have got a maneuver in about 25 minutes. That maneuver is going to be uh, basically here at our apoapsis, which is currently just under 850. I'm gonna burn um, too far. I wanna burn out farther than that. So I'm gonna go to about 886. And I'm doing that because I want this satellite to kind of catch up to us a little bit because this is gonna end up being too far ahead of it. I need to line these up to where 
they are like in that triangle pattern. And this is gonna end up being a little bit too far ahead of this satellite. It's gonna be too far behind, the, it's gonna be basically behind the planet. So by burning too far, by burning this out to where we're at around 886, I slow my orbit relative to this craft. Okay, now this is the part that's a little complicated for some people to understand is that when you burn more, when you go faster, you are actually going slower relative to the other crafts because your orbit is getting wider. Your orbit is getting farther out. It takes you longer to orbit the planet. So the crafts that are closer to the planet than you are going to be going faster than you, at least as far as their orbit is concerned. Their total speed or actual physical speed, as far as the way they're traveling, is slower than you, but they're going to orbit faster than you. So in order for this craft to catch up, I need to go faster than it. I know, it's crazy. It, this, it sounds bass backwards, but it's, that's just the way it is. So we're going to speed up, get ourselves out there. This is going to lose connection because we're too far now ahead of this. Notice how the horizon is now in our way. We cannot transmit a signal through the horizon. So I need to come out. We're going too far, too far, too far. Oh, ooh, don't go too far in the time acceleration. Actually, Kerbal alarm clock stopped me there. So that's good. I think I want the precise nodes interface to be a little bit smaller. I wonder if there's a way to do that. Oh, here it is, scale GUI. Oh yeah, that's what I want. Make this not so obnoxious. I know you guys probably like it because it's bigger and you can see it easier, but on my screen, I like my windows actually fairly out of the way. I usually have a lot of things going on, but that's why I have a really high resolution monitor. I play at 1440p maxed out with all max settings. Um, I record 1080p 60 to distribute to you guys, uh, but I play at 1440 60. And then my monitors are 4K and I usually play in 4K if I'm not recording, but while I record, it's a little difficult to play in 4K. It just doesn't quite, doesn't quite go the way I need it to go, if, if you will. Like, the frame rate's a little bit too slow for me. So that's why I'm playing in, four, in 1440p. I thought about uploading video in 1440p, um, but at the end, I think it's just like, there's not a whole lot of people that would watch it necessarily at that resolution. Maybe there are, I don't know, but I just don't know if it would really matter all that much. Okay, so we're making our burn. With our awesome graphics problems. Things just keep getting more and more unstable as we go. Maneuver has been removed and we are now above we went too far in the orbit, which is on purpose. So you may remember how this works, just to confirm what I've been telling you about orbital periods and stuff. The, this guy here, Sat-1, has an orbital period of one hour, 37 minutes, and 17.43 seconds, if I remember correctly. Our orbital period, though, is one hour, 39 minutes, and six seconds. So we have almost a two minute difference in our orbital period. This one orbits about two minutes faster than we do, which means it's going to catch up to us. Now, this is the part I don't understand. Technically, the atmosphere is right here. We just can't see it. I think that's how that works. Um, so the signal has to be, like this signal should totally match us right now, but it doesn't. I don't know. I don't know why. It just doesn't. Let's go around the planet some more. Probably only one pass is all that's needed here. Maybe more than one, we'll see. Whoa. Okay, that's enough. Yeah, I'm so fast with my, so, so fast with my uh, time acceleration stuff here. Okay, so on the periaps, um, what I wanna do now, later, and I'm, it'll have to be on the next pass, which is okay. On the next pass, right on this periapsis, what I wanna do is say circularize. This will burn retrograde to bring our orbit back down. And then I can sort of situate it in a little bit to, uh, to get the orbital period the same. So let's tell it to point to the node and execute the next node. And actually, before I do that, 
because this is going to annoy me. This craft still has this whole big thing on there. Like, this is still over-engineered, you know? I still have way more fuel than I need. So I guess I know that for the next, for the future. So what I'm going to do here is get rid of that. Okay? So we got rid of it. It's gone. We'll clean it up later. We'll clean up the space, clean up space later. So we got that. We're going to um, basically point towards the node, execute the node, and let's go ahead and get ourselves around. Now this is gonna keep catching up to us another trip around the planet, but that's okay, because it's already a fairly close call. I would like a little bit more cushion, so. So now we're keeping contact with each other all the time. That's what we want. Okay. You can kind of see how the triangle is forming, you know? You can sort of see it. Time warping a little bit. And stop. Did I pass by that maneuver? Uh-oh. Well, maybe it'll still do it. I don't know. And the maneuver's there, so... Interesting, maybe it's not there. Maybe that's just another graphics problem. Yep, another graphics problem. Okay. So, here's our satellite. It's doing its thing. Now our orbital period is, look at this, one hour, 37 minutes, 16.85 seconds. So, we are technically pulling away from this satellite right now. Okay, we're getting, we're, we're, we're getting further away from it. We don't want that. So let's point orbital prograde. Let's get our, our vessel to point prograde. This is pointing towards our orbit, right? In the same direction as we're going. And we're gonna burn, we're gonna burn just a little bit to raise our orbital period. Again, we're gonna go faster to slow ourselves down. I know it sounds really weird, but when you go faster, you make your orbit wider, which increases the amount of time it takes you to get around the planet. Now, we don't have to go very much. It's 17.43 seconds, I think. So one hour, 37 minutes. Uh, and if it makes it, if it's easier to see, you can also look at it here. One hour, 37 minutes, 16.84 seconds. We need it to be 17.43 seconds. So I'm not gonna be able to get that level of precision with this engine. I, I don't have RCS, like I said, we don't, I don't use RCS, I don't like it on my satellites, at least not uh, around these carbon ones. I just think it's a waste of money, he says after he over-engineers the hell out of his satellite. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right-click this engine and I'm gonna turn the thrust limiter down to one. This is gonna give me almost no thrust, okay? Like basically no thrust. And that's gonna allow me to fine tune it to where I need this orbit to be. So let's just increase it just a little bit. And we go on, turn it on, off, turn it on, off, turn it on, off. Till we get 17.43 seconds. You know what? That's gonna be good enough right there. 434. Four. That might be precisely what it was, I don't know. So I will turn the thrust limiter uh, all the way to 100 now, but I'm gonna shut the engine off. So if I turn it on and I need to move it again, I don't have to worry about the thrust limiter because um, I might I probably forget that the, th the thrust was limited, but at least now it's off. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the flight computer and I get ourselves oriented to where we're facing the sun. And by facing the sun, I mean facing away from the sun. Whoop. Oh, what is, come on. Not that much of a tank. Oh, I, I don't, I no longer have the inline stabilizer because that was on that stage that's floating around. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I definitely don't need this much delta V on this stuff, guys. I mean, this this is a full tank of gas here, so um, definitely don't need that. There we go, and kill rotation. Calls it, call it good. So next thing, we have to take this target 
have it target the moon, let's say. Activate. Take this one, set the target, Minmus. And take this one. Oop, a little glitchiness there. No target, let's activate active vessel. And then this one is gonna point towards Duna. And there we go. So we are ready to rock with our satellites. We have two of them, two of them up now. And they have the same orbital period, so they shouldn't move. So now we just need one pointed right here. We need one situated right there. That way it can see this one and it can see this one. And I may want to make these a little bit wider apart, just a little bit. I may want to adjust those, but I'll, I'll do these fine tune adjustments like that off camera. That's the reason I wanted fuel with the satellites is because of fine tune adjustments, but I definitely didn't need that much fuel. Yeah, these are a little bit far out. It doesn't need to be this far away from the planet. So I may actually want to increase this. I may actually want this one to pull up ahead a little bit more, but I will adjust it in the next video or I'll adjust it before the next video or something. When I, once I have the triangle up and running, uh, you guys are just going to be like, it's going to be so cool. We'll be able to do things with unmanned crafts um, without having to worry about losing connection all the time. We'll just, we'll have to worry about signal delay, but not losing connection. And that's the important thing. Uh, we're going to go back to the space center and uh, we'll launch number three. See you then.